500 million years ago, Arizona was a very different place. Ancient oceans overflowing with life existed where now there is little water and even cactus have a tough go at life. This was how Arizona looked up until about 250 million years ago. Throughout this time frame, the land surface that now makes up Arizona was a low flat plain that at times was submerged beneath the level of this shallow ocean. About 230 million years ago that would all change, but for better than 200 million years, sediments accumulated and piled up on the ancient seafloor. Many of the mountains in southern Arizona are either composed of or contain sediments from these ancient oceans. At times these sediments would be exposed and eroded, but fragments from many intervals of submersion and sedimentation remained. Eventually, these sediments were pushed to the surface during subsequent faulting and folding of the Earth's crust and now stand out in stark contrast to the environment in which they formed. A close examination of these Paleozoic sediments reveals astonishing varieties of Paleozoic marine life. If you stacked all of the different Paleozoic formations in southern Arizona, one on top of the other, the resulting cliff face would climb more than a mile from base to top. Unfortunately, there are no outcrops in southern Arizona that have all of the Paleozoic layers exposed. Either the upper layers have been eroded off, or the lower layers are buried beneath valley sediments. The Grand Canyon contains the most complete Paleozoic sequence found anywhere in Arizona. The Whetstone Mountains near Benson, however, are a close second. Many of the rocks that crop out in the Grand Canyon have equivalent rocks that are exposed in southern Arizona and elsewhere. Here is an outcrop of red wall limestone on the Mogion Escarpment. In southern Arizona, the Escabrosa limestone has been correlated with the red wall limestone in northern Arizona. Here is an outcrop of Kaibab limestone near Heber, Arizona. The Kaibab is equivalent to these rocks in the Tucson Mountains and are the youngest Paleozoic rocks found in the state. In southern Arizona, they are known as the Rain Valley Formation. There are very few clues as to what happened at the end of the Paleozoic era preserved in southern Arizona. Anywhere upper Paleozoic rocks are exposed, they terminate in an erosion surface and are overlain by Mesozoic, volcanic, and sedimentary rocks. Although the Paleozoic era has been described as the age of fish, it might be better described as the age of brachiopods. In almost all Paleozoic fossiliferous outcrops, brachiopods can be found. From the humble, inarticulate Cambrian brachiopods to the large, spiny Permian productids, this creature evolved during the Paleozoic era to inhabit just about every niche. The age of many of Arizona's Paleozoic formations can be roughly estimated by the type of brachiopods present. In our explorations, if we run into large productids, we know we are in the late Paleozoic era. Large sporiferids dominated Mississippian through early Permian, a tripa dominated during Devonian, and small inarticulate brachiopods are found among the abrigos Cambrian trilobites. Corals can also be used as diagnostic fossils to help determine the age of Arizona's Paleozoic formations. Outcrops of colonial rugose corals are an indication that you are looking at Devonian or early Mississippian age rocks. Solitary corals can be found in Devonian rocks but reach supersize during the early Mississippian epoch where large specimens 6 to 8 inches in length can be found. Pennsylvanian and Permian horn corals, although common, tend to be much smaller.
When we encounter large protozoa, such as these fusnolids, we know we are probably looking at Pennsylvanian deposits. During the Pennsylvanian, these single-celled animals became supersized and can be up to an inch long. Fusnolids also occur in other Paleozoic rocks, but are generally smaller. Bryosoans tend to be more common in late Paleozoic rocks. Fenestella bryosoans are especially common in the late Permian, with some rocks composed entirely of bryosoan reefs. Echinoids can be found just about anywhere Paleozoic rocks are exposed. However, due to the shallow properties of the ancient Paleozoic ocean, most sea urchin tests and spines and crinoid stems and calyxes became disarticulated after death by wave action or predation. Finding and identifying complete specimens can be a real challenge. Gastropods can be found in most late Paleozoic formations, with terriculate forms being especially common in Pennsylvanian and early Permian rocks. These large straparolis are from the Pennsylvanian Orchia limestone. The Permian Concha limestone has many gastropod forms, most of which erode out as cross sections. With more than a vertical mile of mapped rock units, ranging from the late Cambrian Abrigo limestone to the mid Permian Rain Valley formation, Paleozoic rocks and their associated fossils can be found in many different locations in southern Arizona. We hope you've enjoyed this short video on Arizona's Paleozoic outcrops. If you have any questions or corrections, feel free to send us an email. Our address can be found on the homepage. Hopefully this video will aid in identifying some of Arizona's Paleozoic formations and the fossils they might contain. Until next time, have a great time exploring Arizona's wondrous and scenic natural beauty.